what impact waters of the U.S. regulation changes? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. everything's navigable. Yeah. I, I know, right? That's gonna open up Pandora's box. Um EPD doesn't really have a position on that. We other than we don't have the staff to do it. And we go out to be enforcing uh expanded geographic areas that we do now. Uh, you know, as far as we're concerned, we're still moving along just as we were it won't, won't have to have much impact at all um, in terms of enforcement and any activities that need to be so, uh, so really, really no impact for us and, and, and no, no position on that. Maybe we could get, uh, since Jody was here, maybe we could get Johnny Ives and uh, Austin Scott or somebody to come in and talk about their negotiation on that. I don't know. As far as you heard, I speak recently, I was going to basically say that the same was determined to not come to the EPA in those efforts. Yeah. Well, it's definitely something that we probably ought to be concerned about as a council. Uh, I think we will. And it'll certainly impact the next, maybe not this revision of the plan, but the next revision of the plan, I would think. And I would think there's some federal oversight on that, all the water in the region. Is that what the pen, you know, they haven't, certainly they haven't come to the state and said we're going to expect you to import a bunch of money for you. No, they're not going to do that. Um, and, and it's just considering the positions that, and the status of it currently and the Congress's determination not to fund it, I'd really be trying to speculate. I'd really be speculating to see, see what, what, what this looks like in the next few years. Well, lots, of, lots of rule changes we talked about, about dissolved oxygen and uh, potential stuff. You know, anybody can give us an update on those kinds of issues. Well, but they went from like 12 souls to 30 something souls. They went from 67 Whitman plants to 287 plants. So, they've also changed the definition of an impairment since we haven't they changed the impairment rules since we wrote the plan? No, not that I'm aware of. Uh, uh, now, we're working on on standards for rivers, lakes, and streams. Yeah, maybe that's right. Yeah, that was something that during the first revision that, that we had, Liz Booth come down, who, who's heading that effort up at the state level, to talk about how uh, there's a push to, <coughs> to develop standards and a federal push for the states to develop standards on rivers, lakes, and streams and all the water bodies. That being said, if you're Know, down here, we have slow. If if the water's moving at all, it's slow, and it's uh, you know, naturally low dissolved oxygen. Um, and so, this state or federal push for standards has to be part of this council. So, it needs to recognize the unique, you know, the unique um, hydrology here, uh, and that being that. You can't set a standard that's X, uh, at a blanket standard, when our ours is already so low naturally, so take that into account. That's basically where we left that off as a council, is be sure that whatever standards you, you, you put forward at the state level take into account the naturally occurring conditions in our, you know, tannin. Uh, right. Should we ask Liz to come talk about yes. standards and what water quality so we information we're going to be provided Rusty with? Rusty said was somebody should tell us about the impairments and any changes. So I think that would go hand in hand with that right. discussion. Okay. So we, they had not worked through that. It has not been finalized. Okay. There, there was a target at one time for 2015. That's what I thought. Um, I've never known government really hit any target it put out there. So I, I would think. 
And so I would think that it would be 2015. Now that doesn't mean that, that Liz won't be able to come down and tell, tell us A, whether she'll hit that target or not, what, what information she still needs to get it done and when she expects that target to be revised. Because we have revised those, yeah. those targets. Well, under this, this new land graph that EPA is under, it used to be, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, but the way I'm understanding it now, you dig an irrigation pond. That used to be your pond as long as nobody, if it's on just your property and nobody else was involved, that was your pond. But under the way I'm reading the, the new, it doesn't matter even if it's one person. They're wanting to say every pond, everything's becoming water to state. And that's where we've got a, where it's going to affect this council because people's going to irrigate and everything out of irrigate ponds, but the federal government's going to take them under water to state. So. Yeah, of course, they do say the previous exemptions, which, which would be, that would be exempt. Um, as the state operates, that wouldn't be state waters. If it doesn't, if it's not filled from a source outside of your property and run off of your property, you know, it's, uh, it's your water. You know? and, and that's so, the way it should be. And now with the new determination of EPA, they're going to change that. Uh, so that's something we need to sort of stay on and see how it's going to turn out. I'd sort of like to you know, hear just an update of the yeah. overview. I mean, you know, I think somebody's thinking about floating the battleship in the, yeah. in the in the Swanee River in Fargo in August. That's one thing, but you know, if they're <laughs> talking about uh, making us, you know, dig uh, sediment ponds, you know, on the side of a woods road when we're logging, that's. You, the, uh, you can run an industry in a heartbeat. Yeah. And I guess my question would be, Cliff or Deitra, do you know somebody who would, who would best address? Well, I, I had, a, you know, in this council, some of these folks probably know Russ Pennington, who was with EPD for a while. He handled yeah. a number of things, such as reappointments, as well as um, some of our interaction at the legislative level. And and he was moved to, to GFA to be directors of Governor's Water Supply Projects, except he still helped EPD with all those things and now he has resigned uh, a week or so ago to move on. So I have a question mark as to who the right who the right person will, will be uh, who's going to pick well, up can, those duties. We can talk about that um, in one of the other meetings. Exactly. It doesn't have to be the next or even the October. <coughs> October. It could be That's just right. sometime between October to October. Yep, exactly. Just know that we want to hear something about it. I'd like to know something about it because I get people that ask me about it. There's a lot of confusion. And there's a lot of confusion. I hate, um, and I hate to even hardly comment on it because right. I, I, I don't even claim to understand all of that. It's a lot of pages with a lot of words, and I have not, I've read about nine of them. And you can call different EPA offices and talk yeah, to different. eight different people, and they got eight different understandings. That's, so that's the reason why I put I, I want to tell anybody about. here that uh, right now uh, we're going to have. Uh, Environmental group, uh, y'all may know uh, Mike uh, Asman, engineer. He's going to put on a class, uh, try to educate some landowners. Uh, first of August, we're going to try to do it whenever they have the forestry uh, convention down on Jekyll. If anybody would like to come to that, if we have, if y'all leave me your name and numbers, I'll contact you. And, uh, we're going to. Have somebody break down the new laws and regulations the way they stand, and that's what was so shocking when I went to it. The things that, that's changing is going to affect everybody 50 miles from the coast. So that is a an update the class to update everybody. Yeah, update? well, yeah. Um, I'm trying to think of Mike DeMille. You know Mike DeMille? I know. He's a environmental engineer. Worked for a lot of big companies. Uh, he does all the permit with EPA and uh, the Corps and all this. Well, he's been informing us on the new changes. Uh, so we're going to actually have an update on the new laws. If y'all want to come to it, if you give it to me, I'll let you know when we're going to have it because people don't realize how bad it's gotten. And I didn't realize it until about six weeks ago, and I've been trying to stir up as much as I can because it's going to affect everybody in the southeastern coast. Maybe we can uh, 
I, I usually, when I deal with the courts, usually folks out of Jacksonville, folks out of Savannah, some, and then there's a couple guys that have stationed in the Albany, in Albany, Georgia's office. Between those three places, surely one of those folks could, could come give us their perspective. That's a hit that, that this rule is a yeah, Corps of Engineer EPA jointly that's right. developed rule. So yeah, and, and, and the people we're having is a private uh, environmental engineering firm that's going to put on the class that we're going to pay for. We just want people to come hear what's going on because if we don't start fighting here and in Washington, I'm afraid we're going to be in a world hurt. This surface then gravel. All waters. All they're, they're wanting to get control of all waters. I mean, they, they used to be non-jurisdictional and jurisdictional wetlands. Under this new guideline, <laughs> there's no such thing as a non-jurisdictional wetlands. They're using pine tree rows. Uh, say you had a flat piece of ground, you go in and, and, and put in your rows. Well, if that water flows through that row and it goes to another wetlands, that just can that just made a continuous flow, so they're wanting to take control of that. Uh, so it, it's going to affect the timber industry and everybody else in the long run. Don't look too bad right now, but whenever they break it down and talking about beds turning like a ditch, that's a problem. Well, and you know, like any like any other government agency, you got a set of people in that place right now. Let's just say that easy conversation. All of them agree, no Mike, that's not how we're going to interpret it, that's not how we're going to apply it. But one day all those people will move on. And a new set of folks are going to come in there. So so well, actually, we'll take actually the new ones are already applying it that way. Um, we've got it going on in Brantley where we're trying to get industry in and it's it's flipping from where we had six hundred acres there's a lot bigger piece, but this is one piece. 600 acres of land. We had it delineated. There was 238 acres of wetlands. Under the new rules, that same 600 acres, we just had it redone, is now 187 acres of uplands. The rest of it's been converted into wetlands. So that's a big change. Uh, and it, it's, it's what all South Georgia looks like, pine plantations. And that's what's so scary. So I've got down that we want to try and find some aid to come in at some point in the next year or so to give some clarification on on what that means, what it means for this region. Um, from there. Yep. Lee, also you could <clears throat> probably get uh, someone from the George Forrester Commission to give you a uh, update on the. Uh, BMP audits because that impacts water quality. That kind of gives a picture of where we're at then versus five years ago. I'd like to hear that. Well, we, we, it's been probably four, four years since the came and gave us that. Yeah, I think it was here. Yeah, it was. Great. Well, I think that's all So it sounds like, too, that I, I would think, and I don't want to prioritize for you, but I think in what may be available right now is for our next meeting to probably ask Mark to come to talk about the work they're doing to update ag information um, and then potentially ask or I guess also ask kind of the EPD team I guess it would be Jim Kennedy who can talk about uh, the saltwater intrusion uh, Liz who can talk about the elements in um, modeling the water quality and ways in who does the water quantity. Yeah, surface water. Surface water quantity. Yeah. So that would be um, a good kind of just informational session that would then, I think, feed into, okay, this is the kind of information we're going to have. This is where we are with it now. And as we start to looking looking at where we may want to make revisions, this is, you know, this will it here, this will answer these questions, this will answer those questions. So, um, is that... Was, is, it, was it Hooks that uh, did uh, groundwater? Yeah, Dr. Hooks. Is he still alive? 
He uh, he retired. So who's doing that now? Yeah, he was retired already. Yeah. So who's doing that now? Uh, the water, the Albany State uh, Water Planning and Policy Center is going to to do that. That's what Mark Masters would address. Okay. Yeah, I'm sorry. So he's on your list. Yes. 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 He is. He is. I, because you don't have Lizzie in the deal with the parents, I'll probably mm -hmm. bring the GFC and talk about the Albany BMP office at some point because okay. they all ties together. Is that your stream crossing? Right. <coughs> Great. And I think what would be good about that is what we can, um, and I can talk with Scott and Cliff about this further, but what we may want to consider is um, the first two pieces, which have the June and July deadlines. I can put together from our discussions today, send those back out to Scott. Uh, and, and to the committee and to the council as a whole for any comments, we'll have those finalized and done for EPD. We can use the next meeting as more of an information gathering meeting to hear from these folks, to just have a series of presentations and conversations with them about the kind of information that's going to be um, available. And then from there, again, continue the conversation on elements that, that we need or, or that may be revised in the next plan. Um, we're charged over the between now and the end of September with having three meetings, um, and again the the documents are due June 30th and July 31st for the first two that we've I think we've really pretty fully discussed today, um, and then the the what the the piece about re review and revision recommendations is due the end of August, uh, and so uh, kind of in. in in my mind, that second meeting will inform uh, that document pretty fully. Um, thoughts, comments on that? Does that make sense of how to kind of look at what the next so they, two uh, meetings would be? So I, I was have. just looking at my calendar here. You said we have to have another meeting before the end of July. We don't actually have to have it by the end of July if I put these two documents together and send them back out to you all for any any comments um, before we submit them to EPD. I feel like really um, this review and revision piece, the only reason we would benefit by trying to have one at the very end of July is we could go ahead and create a draft of the review and revision recommendations to then float around before it's due the end of August. And we could have a final meeting to finalize that late in August before it's submitted. What I wouldn't want to see is that all of a sudden on August 29th, we're meeting and trying to put together a final document in a day. Um, I think that the, the more we can do it and have time to think about it and make sure we're not losing things, um, you know, may, may serve us well. Um, but, you know, we have, we have developed a lot of questions that I think we can also look at how that would inform what needs to be revised. So, um, you know, and, and so we, we need to do it with enough time. So, if we want to change anything, that's right. That's right. I think what we want to do is 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 have something towards the very end of July, uh, and then potentially um, come back mid to late August with a draft working document that we could work through to finalize for that August thirty first. Would be would be my thoughts now. We don't have to do it that way. This is, you know, um, my job is to really just help you through a process of however you want me to help you. So we can do it, you know, Scott, however you prefer. Anybody have any thoughts on that? Let, let me say this. It's important for us, especially, I think, going forward with some revisions to have a, try to have a quarrel. So um, <clears throat> that's getting tougher and tougher to do, especially since some people don't exactly know their roles information may not be all that fresh but does anybody have a thought on when we might want to meet late July I'm pretty good last week probably in July but you would like to maybe give yourself some time between that before that 31st day so we would be looking at around the 22nd or the 23rd that week of the 22nd, which is 
I, ha I have other council meetings already scheduled on the 23rd of July and on the 30th of July. Okay, so we're looking at, how does the Monday meeting, do you guys like the Monday? It's Monday though. I think Mondays tend to work better for me personally, but I want to check with you guys. So we'll be looking at maybe Monday the 27th, would that be all right? <clears throat> what um? <laughs> what um? What about the twenty? Yeah, about the twenty. Twenty would also be a possibility. Mm -hmm. Oh no, I didn't. Good question. Is it? I am good. But don't don't stop it. Well, we didn't quarrel. That's the thing. We can't figure any of this. We don't know okay. what anything's going to be, but we might can have a call in range. Ribbon. We Sorry. might can. I don't know where we're going to have that meeting, but we can we can arrange a call in number. We can't physically attend. That way we can make sure. Um, I think we can't go in at all. What what days did you say you were going, Rusty? Uh, I'm out of pocket for the 17th. Of, uh, 17th. July of August today. I mean, the July of today. Okay. But you know, other than just being. Available to help with the quorum. I mean, you're all going to write ahead. Move on. 20th, they've got the name. 20th, the 20th. Others at the table is the 20th. Sounds like 20th. This okay. Let's, let's go ahead and we'll say the 20th. Monday, July 20th, and I'll work on a location. Yeah, does anybody have preference on location? I mean, we haven't been, I, I, we kind of chose Douglas this time because it was central for everybody. Uh, we've had some meetings on the fringes that, that were not all that well attended. Uh, but if anybody has an idea of where they, where they would like to be and what would be more convenient for them, just speak up. We haven't been very, we haven't been very far east lately, I don't think. Uh, you know, maybe Waycross. Uh, I don't know. I know we met once last year. The meetings we held About last year, we met in Tipton and Valdosta and Waycross. The three we had. Waycross would be good. One day I'm going to invite y'all to Brantley. I'm trying to get something built so I can invite y'all down to the house. <laughs> don't yeah. have a room right now, y'all have to come to the house. <laughs> But we're trying to get it. Oh, you made us. We'll work it out. Everybody bring a lawn chair. Yeah, bring your lawn chair. Well, yeah. Uh, Let me see what's available. Sometimes it depends on, on what kind of facilities are available. Well, we always have we always have free space in Fitzgerald. Okay. But, um, that's the far north as you can get in our district, so I try to keep it a little bit centrally located because I am trying to get some forum. I don't want uh, people to have, it's a long drive from Mike or somebody or Andy for you to come all the way to Fitzgerald. That's a long ride. So uh, I like it either here or Waycross would be nice because I ain't got my calendar, but I will change the plan to be here if it's either here or Waycross somewhere. Maybe. Well, maybe we can do Douglas again um, if that works for everybody. Douglas seems to, we seem to have decent meetings here. Okay. Centrally located. Sure. Okay. That sounds great. I'll, I'll work on moving forward that. Okay. Um, so we've got kind of that next meeting date set. Um, if all if the council members make sure you sign in and put your email address. Um, I didn't get any return mail from anybody on this council, so I assume I had your correct mailing address when I mailed to you. But um, if you could just double check your, if you could just make sure your email is there so I can um, double check that. And um, just as just as a um, as a piece of information for both the council and for those um, who have joined us today, um, Cliff mentioned. I don't remember you mentioned this earlier. We were just talking about it. EPD is changing their website some, and the way folks are contacted about the councils is going to change a little bit. Um, I'll be putting all the all the names that I currently have in a database into this new system once it's operational. But then what will happen is members of the public will go kind of sign up to get an email notification. 
Um, and so you'll self-select what councils and really what other information you want all across DNR uh, to be emailed to you. So you'll just be part of a list there, um, but it won't be uh, like kind of an e-blast from me in the future. It will be through this new system. Um, and again, you'll be, you'll kind of self-select on what you want to receive, enter your contact information, and then um, one of the good things from my perspective is someone who has been emailing seven-year-old email address lists, um, there are a lot of bad emails on those lists, or people have changed jobs, or they have moved, and uh, they may have signed up to receive information on a water council when they were a graduate student. Um, in the state and now they've left and they're in Wyoming now and are not really interested in the water council so I still send them emails and they ask me not to so I get you know 30, 30 or so return emails with each e-blast and this new system will eliminate that because if it tries three times and doesn't go through it wipes you off the list so it'll be uh, your responsibility to maintain uh, your updated information in that system. <coughs> And so really, I guess with that, if there's any other comment, Can you mention the, uh, the, the, your notices do go out? That's right. A so month ahead of time. You'll receive so. by mail from me a month in advance a written notification. I typically send out a postcard. Uh, and then two weeks in advance, I send you an email reminder with the agenda attached. And so those are the notifications uh, that I send. I don't want to flood your inboxes with, don't forget, don't forget, don't forget. Uh, but if you need addition, if you want me to send one more, one other notice, I'm happy to. If you want me to send one a week out, I'm happy to, to do that. Um, you know, whatever you want. But basically, what EPD said is you'll send out a written notice a month in advance and an email two weeks in advance, and that's at the same time that we public notice the meeting as well. So if it would be helpful to have additional ones, just let me know, and I'm happy to do that. Thank God, in, in this same vein, we, we talked about getting a quorum and you need a quorum to conduct business and all. Uh, and I don't know who the appropriate one is. The gov before, when we were originally put in here, was the governor and the speaker of the house and, and maybe the city pro tem. The lieutenant, the lieutenant, the lieutenant, the lieutenant governor. governor were the ones that put, put the members on the committee. Whoever's got access to them, needs to talk to them about this list. If that's who's doing the appointment for the new board, there's some people on here that need to be taken off. There's some people on this list that have never attended but one meeting, and I know specifically. I know well, you're that about hurts this. us. I'm not criticizing them. I'm, I'm saying this because it hurts you trying to get a point. Well, I'm glad you brought it up. One of the requests that we've made, and we have been in contact with, with they really haven't determined yet who will appoint to do it, but as far as the OLF goes, we haven't discussed it with them, and we have asked for them to reduce the number required uh, on the overall council so it would be easier to get a quorum. Absolutely, we have had that discussion. And I think that's probably a possibility, Cliff. But yeah. And when the new appointments come down, uh, I don't know if you guys remember, but they sent us the questionnaire, do you still want to be involved? And, and they're going to parse down the ones that didn't, and probably instead of having <laughs> Uh, what did we have with the ex officios? We had 27. Yeah, 27 of those guys. So instead of having 27 total, we're probably going to be under 20. Yeah. Um, so absolutely, that that they can't yeah. tell us when or or what exactly the the, the um, methodology for the new appointments are going to be. I look forward to be something <coughs> similar. I mean, they're probably waiting for uh, all the leadership issues to work out and then allow for those positions to be. Uh, appointed, so I look for really sometime in the next month for that to happen because almost all of that's already gone down. Uh, so um, that's exactly what we're asking. We're asking for some of those folks that haven't come. And, um, that being said, I, I, I do uh, on the comments. I do want to tell every one of you I appreciate you coming. I know that we went through a few meetings when we when we didn't have exactly know what our purpose was, but I think these next few meetings, as you can hear, there's. There's actually some work to be done, and a quorum is going to be important and for you to stay up to speed. If you're still involved, for you to stay up to speed and make conscious decisions is going to be uh, fairly important to attend. Um, I have tried, uh, if you haven't gotten an email from me, uh, I've tried to, to 
an email uh, of most everybody at one point or another in the last few months too and, and got very little response. But uh, just make sure that your email is up to date and if you know somebody who's on the council that's going to stay on the council, make sure we, we have their email. If you let them get a hold of Lee and make sure that we have their contact information if they want to continue on. So, uh, with that, we'll go on to public comments. Does anybody in the public want to make a comment? 